Alright, so to perform our heart and lung sound assessment, uh, we're just going to go ahead and have the patient standing. We want to make sure that their shirt is off so that we can reach all of the places we need. We're first going to be listening to heart sounds, where the heart valves are, and we're going to do this with both the diaphragm and the bell. So I'm going to go ahead, and the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and find the patient's second right intercostal space. So I'm going to come just underneath their clavicle, first intercostal space, second intercostal space. Once I find that, just lateral to the sternum, I'm going to go ahead and just cue the patient to breathe normally. So just breathe normally as I perform this test. And I'm going to go ahead and come just lateral to the second intercostal space on the patient's left side. And that was for the aortic valve, and this will be for the pulmonary valve. After we hear the patient's pulmonary valve, we're then going to move from the clavicle, first intercostal space, second to the third and fourth intercostal space. And we're going to come again just lateral to the sternum. This will be in the fourth or fifth intercostal space, and this is for the tricuspid valve. After that, we're going to make sure that we're on the fifth intercostal space. We're going to come to the midclavicular line, and we're going to go ahead and listen to the patient's mitral valve. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and listen for all of these places, but now with the bell. So we're going to go ahead and find the second intercostal space again, and this will be for the aortic valve. And we're going to move second intercostal space on the left side for that pulmonary valve. And then we're going to come to the fourth or fifth intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum for the tricuspid valve. And then we're going to come to the midclavicular line for the mitral valve. So when we do this with the bell, we shouldn't hear anything. We're just listening with the bell for bruits or heart murmurs. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and now perform the lung assessment. So we have eight places on the front and 10 places on the back. For these, we're going to cue the patient to take a breath through their mouth so that we can have a nice big deep breath to be able to hear these properly. We're looking for low pitched sounds here. So the first one for the right upper lobe, I'm going to go ahead and come just above the clavicle, just with the diaphragm, cue the patient to take a nice big deep breath through the mouth. One breath cycle, then we'll go to the other side, just above the clavicle. Good, then we're gonna come to the between ribs, two and three, so one, two, three, take a nice big deep breath. And we're gonna go ahead and so for this assessment, we actually are going to do this in line with the nipples. So for the right upper lung, for the right upper lobe, we're going to go ahead and cue the patient again, take a nice big deep breath. Good. And then coming just at that line of the nipple, in between ribs two and three, take a nice big deep breath. For the right middle lobe, we're looking for the patient xiphoid process, and we're coming just lateral of that. So on the right side, go ahead and cue the patient to take a nice big deep breath. And again on the other side. Good, and that was for the middle lobe. Now we're gonna go to the right lower lobe. So we're going to go to the xiphoid process, but we're gonna go lateral between the nipple line and the axilla. And go ahead and take a nice big deep breath. And again, we're gonna come to the xiphoid process, but move lateral between the nipple line and the axilla for the left lower lobe. Good job. For this next part, we're going to go ahead and do the posterior parts of the lung. So I'm going to have the chase go ahead and turn around. And we have 10 places here that we're going to be assessing. So for the left upper lobe, the apical segment, we're coming to the upper trap. So on Chase's left side, I'm going to come to his upper trap, cue him to take a big deep breath. And then again on the other side, take a big deep breath. At the left upper lobe, the posterior segment, we're going to go to T3, which should be about in line with the spine of the scapula. 
So we're going to come and have Chase take a nice big deep breath. Now for the right upper low posterior segment, take a nice big deep breath. Now we're gonna to move to the left lower lobe, the superior segment. So we're coming between the spine of the scapula and the inferior angle of the scapula. So can you go ahead and squeeze your shoulder blades back for me? And then go ahead and relax. Good, so now we're gonna do the same thing. Take a very nice big deep breath through your mouth. And take a nice big deep breath through your mouth. Now we're gonna to come to the inferior angle of the scapula and this is going to be for the left lower lobe. So he's gonna go ahead and we're now in the posterior segment. Take a nice big deep breath. And this is at the inferior angle of the scapula at about T9, T10. Take a nice big deep breath. Now we're gonna to come to that inferior angle of the scapula, come just distal and lateral and have him take a nice big deep breath. This is for the left lower lobe, the lateral segment. And go ahead, take a nice big deep breath. And relax. So again, for that assessment of the lungs, we're just looking for low pitch sound.